Well, if you saw the other two attempts, <laughs> this is our third, uh, third and final time. But uh, welcome on, John. And it's, good, yeah, John. it's good to have you hey, on we got some as well. On. And East Student One, how's it going? Got a few people. Uh, hopefully that'll transition over in a second. It seems like there's a bit of a delay in between yeah, I'm those sure two. It will. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, so we are we're tackling the the third day of of what beginners need to know with SEO, and so we're we're taking you from the very basics, like from from like the origin, like if if you don't even have a website, all the way up to, um, all the way up to like uh, like a full functioning website, just step by step throughout that process. So you've been dropping some gems. Yeah, so it's it's hey, been good. Right. It's been good. Cool. Um. And so today we're going to solve the following problems. And and feel free if you're on, coming on the scope to let us know who you are as well if we haven't met you yet. We'd love to, to see if you're new or if you're just joining on uh, who you are and what you're kind of all about. Yeah. If you've done anything with SEO and if you're going to take these into account, let us know. Yeah. So these, these are the problems we're trying to solve today. And so it's like, uh, a lot of people ask, like, how do I find a high ROI keyword to go after? I guess, like, not those exact words, but, like, how do I actually go after keywords that are going to make me money in the long run? Yeah. And then how do I uh, make a website that's enticing for people to click on? Um which is which is which is part of like playing into all that. So we're gonna go yeah. we're gonna go into some good stuff today. We're gonna show you like how to like uh, some some different tools that you can use to research keywords. We're gonna show you. Uh, how to like actually edit like uh, what people see on Google on your WordPress site um, and all that stuff today. So it's lit. Yeah, it's lit. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's, let's so let's go on to this next slide here. So there's really two things, and I'd love to hear your take on this, Levi, as well. So there's really two things that you're looking for in keywords, and the first is relevance. And then I guess like location based isn't a broad thing. It's kind of like a subset of relevance. There's probably like a few different things we can talk about with like relevance. Yeah. Um, but but what I'm meaning with like relevance is is like intent. So like rather than like uh, ranking for like the keyword swimming pools, it's like if you're a swimming pool p company, you probably want people that uh, want to install the swimming pool. So a better term would be fiberglass install or in ground pool installation. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, this is a really good topic. Uh, we actually just recently had a training with the president of our company here at Netmark um, last week, and he touched on this this point really well. And he basically broke it down into where relevance has two uh, subtopics. There is intent, which is the first. Well, I, actually, I guess it's uh, topical relevance and solutional relevance. Those are the two. So it does it fit the topic that you're after? And then there's a provide searchers with an actual solution. And the one we were talking about, because we deal with uh, reputation management here a lot at Netmark, uh, we were talking about reputation management keywords. So if we uh, we try to think what we want to rank for, people are, they let's say, whatever, somebody went and cheated on their wife, uh, whatever, they got caught up, now they it got found out, they want to fix their reputation online because it's losing them money, whatever, whatever, you know? And so... Uh, we, we do that all the time and we're in a position to do that, but how do we be found when people are looking for us? So we want to make sure we find keywords that have a good topic. That uh, so, so what are some offhand? I guess reputation oh. management, uh, That that's a start, reputation management firm, reputation oh, for, managed for, reputation. For yeah, as a yeah. company, yeah. I'm trying to think of different ways. So and then if you look at it, and let's think of somebody searching reputation management. Are they going? Are they going to necessarily be a high converting customer? Uh, not as high converting as if they type in like reputation management firm or something. Then that qualifies them. You know that they're looking for a firm. You or I mean? or if there's words that specifically say like or like that that reveal their buyer's intent. Yeah. So it's yeah. Like reputation Solutional. management firm. Does it provide a solution? That, yeah. So that's the thing. So it's, it needs to be on topic A and B provide a solution and and. You'll find too with a lot of these like reputation management. We looked into it, and reputation management um, doesn't have, uh, and a lot of them too don't have tons of competition. But they're also like you might get tons and tons of impressions, views for that. But especially in paid advertising, you're going to be paying for a spot. It's just not as relevant. It's not as qualified. You need to really qualify your traffic and make sure that um, you're targeting keywords that show intent, buyer's intent. 
um, not just something broad. It's not going to really help you out. Yeah, and so like, uh, and that's that's a good part, like of of like location based as well. But I'm going to show you. So this is these are the tools that we would use for this, and I just want to show you how they kind of work here. Um, so the first is Google or AdWords, and there's Keyword Planner within AdWords. And so basically what you can do here is you can, you can tell it what you do. So, and if you've never used the Keyword Planner in AdWords, oh, excuse me, if you've never used the Keyword Planner in AdWords before, uh, just create an AdWords account through your Gmail account. I think you have to set up a campaign that you can pause it. But you have to basically you got to get it through AdWords. Uh, I spent like probably an hour and a half searching around looking for this tool one time, and then it clicked. I got to create an AdWords account. <laughs> so pro tip there might save you some time. Yeah. So so you, you basically you go into into AdWords and you you put in like what you do. So like for example on this one, what we're showing here is uh, is like orthodontist. And so if, if you go down there, you can, you can generate like a list of ideas. And so on this list of ideas, you get like retainer, which probably is a stupid keyword. <laughs> uh, but like the thing about retainer is like it's, it's, 100, or it's 10 to 100,000 searches a month, which yeah. can be appealing. But what you're looking for is more like, like those types of things. So like- uh, Well, and retainer is a good example of what we were talking about because retainer has an enormous search volume. Mm -hmm. uh, how, what is it, 10K? Yeah, uh, what does that say? 10 to 100. So 10,000, on average, let's say 10,000 people search for this keyword a month. That's awesome. You, you could potentially be in front of 10,000 people, but it's not as qualified because maybe you sell retainers, um, but people just typing in retainer, they might be looking for an image of a retainer. They might be looking for- They're a fourth grader to fix their retainer. On what retainers are. Retainers, are. retainers, yeah. So that's why you would do something like uh, off the type of retainer you offer or do something to qualify a buyer's intent. Yeah, yeah. So- and then you can look through here, and so it's like as you as you find them, you can add them to your plan over here in the corner. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, um, and then you go to review plan. And so what's kind of cool about uh, AdWords is you can see you can see like the estimated like, um, like the the impressions that you get like, and, and in that screen before you could see the competition stuff. You can also download this into an Excel sheet. You can make it all pretty and stuff. Yeah, and send it to your clients. Okay, <laughs> absolutely. Okay. But I, uh, I, uh, yeah. So that that's a that's a great Wait, way go, to go going. back real quick. Yeah. Uh, with the volume and competition, so you can see the volume there is a media. Let's go to the top one again. Ten. Oh, to a hundred thousand. Ten k to a hundred thousand for a retainer. Yeah. Competition's medium. Uh, we we were talking about this too in our training. Is that the more qualified a keyword gets, the less volume it has. So retainer has. 100,000 searches, but if you look, well, I don't know different types of retainers, but if you look for this specific type of retainer that you sell or whatever, it uh -huh. doesn't have nearly as many searches. So you want to find something in the middle too that's like topical and has intent, but it's not so qualified that no one's searching for it. That's the thing. So this is really, really handy because you can see the volume. You can see the search volume. You can see that people are actually searching for it. I mean, there's no reason to optimize for a keyword that has zero volume, meaning never gets searched. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So kind of like the the Goldilocks keyword is is one that has like a decent amount of traffic, which makes it interesting. And then you have like a long tail keyword that you know uh, will convert for your business into customers, or like they ha has the right intent. Um, and then it's not super competitive. Yeah, would be like the ultimate like that'd be keyword, ideal. You know? Yeah, and that and that's what you do when you keyword research. You try to find things like that. Use these tools to see. Okay, this is the volume, the competition, and you can start to find out. This is the route I need to head. Yeah. So, let's go back on to this. Yeah, so that's the first part, and that's kind of tying into what we were talking about yesterday about making great content. Is like you want to make it off of really good keywords. I. Uh, so, and then, oh, uh, I guess, I guess we'll show this, this tool as well. So this is Google Trends. Slash Google Trends is really cool. Google. So Google Trends will show you, I'm trying to remember, is it, does it show you volume? It doesn't show you search volume, but it shows yeah, you. Yeah, it shows you kind of like how it, how it goes over it. time. Yeah. You know, so let's say like, I don't know. Do this one, just do interior design. Oh, snap. There we go. And 
just over time. So you can see, uh, so this is out of, this, this isn't, uh, it doesn't show you how many people are searching it. This just says 100 being the most that the term interior design is searched, zero being the less that it's searched. doesn't tell you if it's a thousand, a million, whatever, but it just says the most is 100, zero less. And you can uh, see that at this month or this time of year, because right here is this, uh, boom, the peak for interior design is around February. It looks, let's see, is that consistent? Yeah, so it dips around in December and February. So then you can also come in here and compare, like type in luxury interior design. Luxury interior design. So this, this makes it really easy to be able to compare your keywords against each other because all of a sudden like, oh, you see like, oh, interior design compared to luxury interior yeah. design is just like Yeah. But luxury might be more qualified for you. And so yeah. and don't confuse this. This doesn't mean that luxury interior design never gets searched. It means that compared to interior design, it hardly gets searched. If we remove this one, uh, then we'll be able to see this. These are the trends for itself. Yeah. So the peak, the 100, the most lux in luxury interior design has ever searched is 100. But you can also come in here and compare, type in luxury interior designs with an S. So this is also a good way to know. Uh, do, do I add the S or do, if you have something close, there's some of these uh, that I've come across. So you, this this shows you, you would know that you would want to use luxury interior design over interior designs, you know? Yeah. There's some like pools versus swimming pools or things like that. And so this is a good thing to use in tandem with uh, Google AdWords because you can you can look at these things and then like it's like this kind of like a good pair because yeah. this shows you it over time. You know, because like you could have one that has a really high search volume now, but you see that it's like, <laughs> yeah, like just going down for forever. And so right. it's like, maybe it's not like, what well, the example that we always give about the facsimile machine or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like nobody's searching fax machines anymore. Yeah. And if they are, they're definitely not using the word facsimile. Yeah. That's the point. <laughs> well, yeah, that's it. That's that it. was the point. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was the point of the example. Yeah. Time, but I'm saying and, like, uh, this is funny too because technology. locationally I've, uh, we have a couple clients that, like worldwide, some in the UK. I mean, and so I will be using uh, this tool to see, uh, type in United Kingdom. You can see that it's funny because we'll see different trends with different word types. So in the UK, a certain word is searched more than another. Like I found, I don't, without, I don't need to search it, but I think it was like picture house was one of them. The term theater versus the term picture house. Picture house in London was searched tons and tons and tons. But in the U.S., Picture House was hardly searched. So there's some things like that. If, if you are trying to target a location, because Bruce was talking about locational keywords earlier, consider uh, these type of things like uh, theater, for instance, spelt with an E at the end. The theatry versus theater. Yeah. <laughs> Run trends on that, and you'll see that in certain type uh, areas of the world. I think you can even see first theatery. Boom. Wow. Let's see. So these are pretty close, but you can see down here the different types of the world, uh, what which phrase is used more. So you would know that you would want to optimize maybe uh, theatre in the UK and theatre. Theatre. So let's run the same uh, exact comparison, but instead of worldwide, just in the UK. Let's see if it's different. Boom! Look at that. Yeah, it's a that's big crazy. Example. That's a huge difference. So this is the, you just kind of, what you, you start to see some ideas and keywords. You start to get your keywords together, and then you can run through here to see which ones make the most sense. And then you start throwing them in, you know, start using them. Yeah, and Caitlin, I saw that you joined on. Let me know if, let me know if that's glitching for anybody at all. Like, it looks really glitchy. Yeah, right? is this even working for you guys? <laughs> Zoom in, man. Oh, okay, on this. So yeah, this is, uh, um... Yeah, so this is what, what we just did, if you just barely hopped on, uh, we compared, and we can even go back, go back to the top, scroll up, and just hit the United Kingdom where it says that. Yeah. And go back to Worldwide, click Worldwide. So Worldwide, the term theater versus the term theatry. Uh, <laughs> is that really how they say I, it? I don't know, but that's the only, only way theater. I can make a differentiation. Distinction. So, yeah. uh, so theater in blue is Worldwide searched more than theatry, but... If you look at it in the UK, that's the graph we were just looking at. The UK is dras that red drastically shifts. And so this is a really good tool to be able to see exactly where your market, what your target is, um, the best keywords to be using. I want to see that shift again. That was just really cool. I didn't expect that example to work so well. United Kingdom. Yeah. Boom. Now you can see the red. 
way higher than the blue because in the UK they use that term better. So if you're in the UK, you, you now know which version of the term you're going to use. Yeah, just really, really handy. Dive okay. in, play around. Yeah, and uh, let me know if you guys got any questions on there or if you want us to zoom in again too. Like I know the delay seems to be really pronounced today between what we're seeing and what you guys are saying. So Yeah. Uh, let us know. So, uh, but those those are those are the two tools that you really should get familiar with, and they are completely free hey. for a limited time. Hey. Just kidding; they'll probably <laughs> always be free because Google wants you to spend for a limited time. So you buy them through us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so that that's the first part of what we wanted to talk about today. The second part is making your website enticing so people can can click on it, and this is. Um, uh, like, and we got some, some other tools like to, to help you figure out like how to do this today. Well, I guess not tools, but just like, we're going to show you how to do it as opposed to just tell you to do it. Yeah. Um, but fixing your title tags, uh, so that they're keyword focused and let's, let's go into a brief description here of what a, uh, a title tag is and kind of what goes all along with them. So the title tag is this right here. It is, uh, the, the thing the thing it's like yeah it's like the the, the title the top link yeah the top it's link the title on, of the whatever listing the search listing basically yeah so what it comes down to this is this is something i screenshotted out of google um so you have your title tag here on top you have your url and then you have what is called a meta description yeah <laughs> um yeah and they're basically i don't know if, if you're new to this kind of stuff like uh you could probably go impress somebody with those words. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I just remember the first time Which I heard words? It. Yeah, title tag, meta oh, description. Like, no. I, well, I don't know. Like the first you time. You can't impress anybody with that. Well, <laughs> well, no, 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 no. Like the first time. You first time. No, the first time I heard those though, it's just like, uh, I mean, like, yeah, they're not like four dollar words where they're yeah, like, really yeah, long, yeah. but it's just like it sounds highly technical. Okay. What I mean, it isn't though in the industry. No, it isn't. It so isn't. I mean, if you're talking to someone but, in the industry that knows, they'll be like, "All right, cool. You just figured out what a title tag is. Nice." Yeah, yeah. Keep learning. <laughs> but, but, but no, but no. But I'm saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. If it's your first go around, like I know I was yeah. confused forever. With those. That's yeah. all I'm trying to say. Yeah, and there. Well, the thing is, these. I mean, title and meta tags, and maybe that's why I thought your comment was so funny to me. It's nothing crazy because it's one of the first things you learn in SEO. Yeah, yeah, and. It's one of the most powerful things. Like they really are. This is this is what people see before they get to your website. You know, like this is your chance to capture their attention, your chance to make that first impression. You only get one chance to make a first impression, you know? So optimize these correctly, do this right. Yeah. So let's let's go into these and I guess I could discuss the other parts too, is making them accurate and then action focused. And we we will now show you how to do that in yeah. WordPress. Getting in it. Which is what? It's something like seventy percent of the internet on WordPress. I think it's twenty. I think seventy would be outrageous. Ninety. Ninety percent. It's a hundred percent. Ninety-five. Yeah, everything's built off of WordPress. It's built by Netmark. Yeah. So this is this is uh, this is a tool right here um, called Yoast. And for that one guy, we will zoom in. Uh, but yeah, so Yoast SEO. Like, if you haven't downloaded this plugin and, and put it in yet, you should. Yeah. Um, it's going to really help with SEO. Barry Lamar, what's up? Welcome. Um, Barry. But yeah, so it's 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 a tool called Yoast. And if you haven't seen our, we, we did a scope on this a while ago too, uh, which is like everything about Yoast. It's called like, uh, don't do SEO the hard way, use this free tool. So that's 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 in our bio here if you want to get like really in depth with Yoast. But, but basically what we're going to do here is you see, this is the this is the title tag. So what we were just talking about. So it's like netmark keyword report. Find what your site ranks for now, uh, and then the slug. So the slug is is what comes after like the slash on the URL. So for example, so it's www.netmark.com/slash/keyword-report, and so you want these to be be clear and, and also to include your your keyword into those, um, or whatever you're like you're trying to have the site rank for. Yeah. Um. And then you put in like your, your meta description. And so basically, all right, so again, that's, that's what's going to come underneath here. So we put, this is a great meta description. So you're basically trying to describe like what is in that link, but in a way that is, uh, 
like benefit oriented that's like action oriented so they're gonna they're gonna look at this meta description they're gonna see that what's in it and they're gonna click on that yeah um and then also these have uh links that are do you do you know what the links are just look it up real quick. well it'll show you right here right but i mean there's a there's a certain there's because it's, it's 60 characters it's it's 60 characters for the the top is it and you probably ideally are yeah, under 50 55 60 for the top yeah uh, let's see what the meta tag is. And it's, it's, like it's it is important to make sure that you um, not only stay within the length, but also fill out the length. Use all the space that you can. Uh, get all the words that you can in there, and don't just stuff keywords. Obviously, like you want to be compelling. Someone's gonna read this online. They're gonna see it, and they're gonna either click it or not. Yeah, so it's gotta be very clear, and that's yeah, benefit oriented. Uh, let's see. Search engines generally truncate snippets longer than 160 characters, so try to stay within that. So 160. 160. And so then if, if you're not on a WordPress site, it's highly technical. Just kidding. You, no, you, no. Set the put, <laughs> you set the put like the title tag. And In fact, uh, let's just view this page. Show you right now. Yeah, we can switch to inspect element. Let's check out the code. Uh, let's maximize this. So uh, I'm sure if you're familiar with websites at all, uh, you know there's a head. Can we zoom in here? Oh, let's zoom in. You know you have a head and a body inside of uh, every website. The head is where the title tags go. Um, you'll see meta, it's probably, one of them should be meta description, but here's title. So there's a title tag, it literally inserts it into the code for you. <laughs> and then your meta uh, description should be here somewhere as well. Let's just control F for this. Oh, maybe it's not in here. So zoom. Oh, because you didn't add one. You didn't add one. But yeah, this is where it would go. It'd be the, just like these other meta tags. Um, let's show this back to the top again. Meta, so where it says char, char set name, uh, it would just say description equals boom has your description in there. So yeah. If, I mean, yeah, and, and you can Google how to do that a little bit more in depth if you need to. Uh, we. We deal with a lot of WordPress sites, and a lot of people use WordPress, so the easiest thing to do if you have a WordPress site, Yoast SEO, that plugin's amazing, <laughs> makes it really easy. Makes it um, Yeah, otherwise, just you can physically add the title tag, the meta tag, uh, or element in the HTML, and it'll be good. Yeah, so, and and again, so kind of, since you're giving context, so you want to make sure to include your keyword, you want to make sure it's accurate, and you want to make sure it's like action focused, so they're actually going to yeah. do something off of what you tell And them. here's something too that I came across not too long ago. I got excited, we rebuilt the site for one of our clients, and I'm thinking, okay, new site's gonna help with rankings a lot because it's mobile friendly now. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna update the title and meta tags on their site. So I start going through with some of these keywords and I start using, well, like this, uh, let's go back to the design example, luxury interior design, whatever, the luxury interior design. Uh, I start to add them throughout these different pages and all of a sudden, rankings start to tank. And I'm like, what did I do? So I bring over one of our guys that's uh, really knowledgeable, start talking to him. And what I had done was I used that same, a lot, like I used variations, but of the same keyword. So let's say it was interior design, it would be like, I would use luxury interior design, but then I would use uh, residential luxury interior design or commercial luxury interior design. And, and what happened was, now those pages are cannibalizing themselves. They're, they're all fighting each other for that top spot, and so it hurts uh, the ranking overall. So you need to be careful that when you optimize a keyword for a page, choose one or two keywords per page that you optimize for and, and focus those keywords for that page. Yeah. Use other keywords for other pages. It's not, um, you don't just throw that keyword in a million different places on your site and now your site ranks for everything. You need to think of it as how is this page gonna show up and is there another page that will be more relevant for this keyword because if so optimize that page for that keyword not this page if that makes sense because otherwise you're fighting yourself and that's that's just not good <laughs> it's not <laughs> yeah their, their rankings did yeah. drop when i did that i saw it happen with my own eyes i learned that lesson the hard way and uh, yeah so we've since got it back up you know you can go back in there and fix it up um but it's just it is good to note when you go change your title and meta descriptions make sure you're using that keyword once and that's a cool thing too with yoast if we pull yoast back up there's a there's a checker in there that shows you a checklist of all the things that you've done right and then what else you need to do um to fix it and so it'll it'll say like has this keyword been used on the site before because when you put your target keyword in there i think it is 
Um, and then it'll tell you, nope, you haven't used this anywhere else. Yeah. Uh, so, so down here, type in this focus keyword, whatever our keyword keyword needs to be. Uh, keyword. Keyword. Hey, our keyword. Do it. Keyword. Okay. So now it says at the very bottom that that turned green as soon as you type that. You've never used this focus keyword before. Uh, you hit enter, so it. it don't read it. Yeah. It's a... And then the same thing with these. Uh, the rest of them. So. Yeah, and this is what this is literally what we use as kind of a check mark to see if we're in the right the right realm. Like you can see, this bar is green. If you erase it, it's going to go red. So go go until the bar is green. How much do you charge for this? Uh, for for my site, on average. On average, we usually set up budgets uh, anywhere from three hundred to a thousand a month. Uh, three hundred isn't going to do much. The real magic starts to happen in the 600 to 1,000 range a month. We can start to really get you some good results over a period of time. Of course, it can take anywhere from six months to a year to see tangible, real tangible results in the search engines, but we'll start to see real movement much faster than that. Of course, it's a lot harder to get to position one to three, and if you're not in the top page, and especially not the top three positions, you're not going to see that. So we get little wins like we jumped her from page 40 to page three. Awesome. A lot of, like, and that's a huge win for us. You know, that's positive movement. But for the actual client, they're like, okay, cool. I'm not getting any sales off that. You know, so it's, uh, it usually does take time. But we'd be more than happy to look at what, um, kind of what you're working with, what your budget is. We're very, very flexible. Uh, and I'm sure we can meet your needs one way or another. Um, but back, yeah, back on topic with this. Well, I was going to say that too, like, as far as, like, seeing results. Because I think it's interesting because... I'm just kind of seeing this intersection now between like SEO and like usability. So it's like, it's like, though it's like, though you might not be on page one of, of Google or whatever, it's like, if you write with like this kind of like idea in mind that like, we're going to focus it around specific keywords and we're going to, we're going to deliver like really high quality value on that. Like yesterday we talked all about like content and like how content value like matters, like getting 2000, like, or like, yeah, like getting 2000 words, building out the pages and stuff. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's going to help you with not only like when people come to your site, it's going to be clearly organized. Like it's, it's uh, and then like, they're going to have in-depth uh, content and like, it's going to be more shareable. It's going to be more useful. It's going to be all these things. So it's yeah. like with like, yeah, the results, like to see it go all the way up to the page one of Google, that might take some time, but like for other things, uh, which are also very important to like businesses, like I think the results are, are as soon as you do it, you know? Yeah, there can so. be great results. And then also too, there's, uh, I mean, we're a full service digital marketing agency. So usually what, and we'll, and we'll see this a lot, people will want results fast, faster than six months, faster than a year. And so what we'll do is we'll set up an SEO budget so that we can start, uh, we can start building out those gains for the future. Uh, but in the meantime, we just, we start to, we set up some ad campaigns and we run AdWords so that we can, send traffic right away to the site we can start we can start converting people right away it's paid traffic uh and and we and we're, we have a guy here that's really really good at doing that make sure i think even have you been doing a little bit of that yeah i've been doing that as well Bruce, <laughs> he's, a, he's becoming an adwords pro uh, so what and what we'll do is we'll initially hit it with adwords and over while we build up the seo because seo is organic you know it just it takes time to grow ads right away they're going to be there so we'll start driving traffic with ads over time five six months now organic starts to pick that up. And and maybe you're already doing so well with advertisements that you're like, heck yeah, let's keep rolling it. I'm actually making money. I don't mind spending money to make money. And organic can help boost that. And we know that those two play hand in hand very well together. Uh, we've seen we've seen some case studies on that. And then if maybe you decide, okay, I don't really want to run ads anymore. My uh, SEO is in a great spot. Okay, maybe you want to uh, come off the ads now, maybe raise your SEO budget so we can do more. Uh, so, so there's options, you know, if you need stuff immediately, we have a solution for you. If you uh, if you need organic results, we have a solution for you. If you need your website fixed up, rebuilt, redesigned, we have a solution for you. Yeah, so I mean, just let us know. We're happy to be in touch with you. Sounds like you just started SEO. Just started SEO? Hmm. Like, how so? I don't understand your, uh, your comments, sir. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, so I mean, I was just going through that checklist, but... The, the little checklist on Yoast, if you get all those lights green, it basically says you're in really good shape. And it tells you you have th plus 300 words on your page. You have uh, this, that, the other. So Hello. it's really good stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you want to get in touch with uh, one of us directly, what's, what's your so, email? Uh, so the best, the best way, though, really is uh, WordPress SEO. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> um, so yeah, the best way really to get in touch with us is like in the Periscope bio. Uh, so if you swipe over on our bio, we have a link to it. It's like uh, it's netmark.com slash keyword report. And like then we can take a holistic report. Like you can see what your website's ranking for. You can see what you're doing with all that different stuff. Um, and then uh, the other person talking about WordPress SEO is, uh, yeah, it's a real thing. It's a real thing. It's a real thing. <laughs> and Thanks, guy. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I'd love to answer any other questions that you all have. Yeah, and please reach out to us. We'd be happy to get on the phone with you, get on the call with you, discuss uh, what, how you want to grow your business, what your ideas are. We want to help you succeed. So, we really do. Yeah, so hit us up on there. Uh, also, my email is in the Periscope bio as well, bpck at network.com. And we will talk to you all again soon on step number four. Do you guys do CRO, conversion CRO? rate optimization? Uh, we do, yeah. We have someone that focuses a lot more on that than either Bruce or I does, but we definitely have a solution for that. We can get you in touch with the right people. Uh, yeah. Nice. What's your name? Add Steven. Add Steven. So, uh, I take it. Do you do you have some experience with like ads and stuff? I'm gonna gonna assume from the name Add Steven. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Um, possibly. Possibly. Because yeah, I'd be interested. I, I know like uh, the scope kind of gets both. It gets like entrepreneurial type people, and it also gets a lot of people from different like or that are that are marketers themselves. So. Yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, so we will, we will chat again tomorrow and, uh, just kind of keep building on this, this list of, of just like how to do SEO from, from the beginning all the way up to, so how many are you doing then? You're on three? We're going to do probably seven, seven different steps to this. So you're not going to be the guy that's like five, seven steps to success and only put out five. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. Maybe, maybe. (laughs) <laughs> anyway, anyway, everybody, thanks for, thanks for yeah, uh, thank you. Came. We will we, uh, it. we will chat again soon. So see yeah. you. Later.